All right, so welcome everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kate Mueller. I am the Chief Product Owl and Resident Cheesemonger here at Knowledge Owl. And uh, today I'm really excited to talk about one of our most recent brand new features in the tools menu called Advanced Search. Uh, this one has been a very long time coming and we'll likely still have quite a bit of work happening on it uh, in the coming months. So I'm excited to get to introduce you to our first implementation of it. Uh, and uh, anticipate that we will be building a lot more on it over time. Before I get into the feature itself, I wanna talk a little bit about why it exists at all. Um, so when you run a search either in your live knowledge base or down here through find articles or through manage, what we're mostly searching there is the actual text that is stored in an article or the article's title. So that typically ends up being most of what you can see in the editor. But there's a lot of stuff that actually exists in an article that isn't just the text that you can see. So in both editors, you have the option to toggle to what is called code view or source view. And underlying all of that, we store full raw HTML of all of your content. So paragraphs come in in a P tag, you get lists within an, an unordered list or an ordered list and individual list items. You get uh, the full structure for hyperlinks, a whole bunch of other stuff. And one of the limitations of the sort of text-centric search that you can get already is that it doesn't give you a way to get at stuff in this underlying HTML. And that is exactly why advanced search was born, because it is designed to search the full HTML in an article. So this allows you to target all kinds of things. You can look for references to embedded topic articles, such as this one. You can look for links to articles that are created using the HGID format. You can look for iframes. You can look for a particular hex color code. If it exists in the HTML, it is something that you can search for in advanced search and get results back from. So it basically takes what was already like a fairly good search and like pumps it way up on steroids and makes it like all seeing and all powerful. Consequently, it can be a little intimidating and overwhelming to use it because it is so much more powerful searching. So my goal with today's session is to just make it slightly less intimidating and hopefully get you out there using it and seeing the potential value for it in your day-to-day -day work with your knowledge base. So advanced search is uh, located within the tools menu. When you get here, it's gonna give you a pretty sparse screen. It'll give you the option to choose between two different search types. Most of what we're gonna work in today is exact matches. Those are case sensitive searches. We also have the option to do regex patterns, which are case insensitive by nature and allow you to search for patterns that might involve wild cards or statements or something like that. I would say for most average users, the exact match will give you most of what you need other than the case insensitivity, in which case the regex pattern might be useful. So you're gonna select which search type you wanna do first. I always suggest starting with exact match to see if you can get what you need with that because it is a slightly faster search than the regex pattern. Then it'll have you put in whatever search text you are looking for into this little search box. And by default, we will search everything that has a published or a needs review status. So those two statuses are what is currently live out there in your knowledge base for your readers to see. You can use the checkbox to also include a draft or archived articles. We winnowed those out to begin with since very often folks are looking for, oh, I wanna update all of the places that we referenced this URL and you don't care so much about archived or draft or deleted things because nobody's actually seeing that content anyway. Once you hit the button to run a search, so let me do this for a second. What do I wanna search for here? Oh, let's do a search for everything that might have an iframe in it. So once I do a search, I will, I, you saw it very briefly, there's a little progress bar at the top. It'll tell you the progress as it's working its way through your articles. Since this is a very tiny test knowledge base, these searches are gonna run super fast. Those of you with much larger knowledge bases, you'll see that progress bar kind of increment along the way until it gets through all of them. You'll get a success message once it completes. 
And then you'll have this download option. So right now, whatever gets returned from that search, we just automatically dump into the CSV export. We did this kind of on purpose as a way to test how useful the feature was to figure out what people might want in a, dis a UI display. Since we've now gotten some feedback on that, we are hoping to build a UI display of the search results. So that will be uh, version two of this feature. But for now, it'll come down in a CSV, which you can download and then access, which I will have to update how I am sharing so that you can actually see the CSV. Not terrifying at all to say, just share my whole screen. All right, in this case, since it's a small knowledge base and I was looking for a very specific thing, I've just got a couple of results in this. So the first couple of columns here are just gonna help identify where we found whatever this was. We'll pull both articles and custom content categories. So you might see an object type here of either article or category. We'll then give you the title of whatever that article or category is, the link to open it in edit mode within the app, the link to view it in your live knowledge base, the name of the category that it lives within, what the publishing status is, who the designated author is on that article, and who the person who last modified it was. This should be enough if you're doing audits or updates to be able to work through that full list. And I imagine we'll include a fair amount of these same fields when we build the actual UI display for this. A couple of questions I've had to field from people as they were first starting to use this. Why do we show this last search ran on and what was searched? Why does it show like the download button? There are a whole bunch of reasons for this. First and foremost, it's that if you've got a big knowledge base, depending on the complexity of this search, the search might take a while to run. And we want you to be able to start the search and then go do other things and live your life and come back and get the results. So part of why we display this metadata down here is so that if you hit run a search at 10 in the morning and then you get pulled into back-to-back -back meetings for the next three hours and suddenly you go, oh, I bet that search is probably done. You can hop back in here, confirm that like whatever you searched for was the most recent search term and nobody else has snuck in and done a search since then. And you can still download that CSV after the fact. So if you've got a big knowledge base and it's taking a while, you are not stuck on this page waiting for it to finish. You can go do other things wherever you want and come back and get that CSV. We store these CSVs for about 24 hours from the time of the search run. We only store them for the most recent search. So if you're running multiple searches, be sure you download the CSV in between searches. This information is also knowledge base wide. So if I come in and run a search and then Mary Beth comes in and runs a search, the next time I go in and look at this, I will see the information around her search. Whatever mine was will get booted from the history. The CSV won't be there. And we only allow one author to run a search at a time. So if somebody running a search and I come in here to try to run it, there will just be a little message that says other search in progress. You'll have to wait until that completes. But anybody who has access to this page will be able to download that CSV and interact with it. Um, I'm going to pause there before I start doing some search examples just to see if anybody has questions on any of this so far because I feel like I've been talking really fast and I wanna be sure I didn't gloss over anything really quickly that needs a slightly longer explanation. Plus I need water. Either I'm doing an amazing job or just nobody is brave enough to ask, so. Hey, you inspired me to come up with a new tagline for Knowledge Owl. What is it? Helping you live your life since you're 50. <laughs> Let's see if so. That's uh, go live your life. Run your yeah, go your live your life, and then come life. back and look at your search or work in your knowledge base. Yes. So, I honestly love that you can start the search and wander away because there are some searches that do take a little while, and I tend to be like a, a squirrel when I'm doing knowledge stuff. So it's oh, I want to run the search. Also, I need to update those four things. Let me go open 8,000 tabs, update those things, and then come back and check on my search. So I find that functionality actually useful. 
Okay, so a few examples of stuff that we might choose to look for here. I think the go-to a lot of us do is maybe words or phrases. You certainly can do those here. I would be hesitant unless you have a very compelling reason to use advanced search for that rather than using a more normal search, like find articles will do a text search. The live knowledge base will do a text search. Manage articles will do a text search. So what we're really looking for here is stuff that's a little bit harder to get out there. So I mentioned the link to articles. Let me commandeer one of these other tabs. We're gonna look a little bit at some of the interesting things that you might have embedded in your content. When you embed a link to article, so that's using this insert link to article option, what we actually embed is not the full URL of the article itself. We embed this funky little code, the HGID code, which then includes the article ID within it. And this allows us to have those links be evergreen regardless of changes to the permalink, for example. So if you wanted to run a search to find every article that has a link to article or something else, what you'll need to do is come in and grab whatever this HGID format is. I can tell you the ID is always the article ID, which is displayed in your URL of your editor in the part after article slash ID. So you don't necessarily have to go steal this from an article. If you know that format, you could just copy and paste it in. When in doubt, grab it from a code view and dump it in. So we can do this as an exact match. We don't have to get fancy with regex patterns. We can grab that HGID code with the ID, run it. It'll do a search. It'll give us whatever is referencing that particular article. So this can be a great way to track down all of the things that might be referencing a given article right now, because we don't have references for that yet. And this allows you to walk through that. Other things you might want to search for here. Topic articles also get embedded with this double square brackets, KO topic, colon, and then the ID here again is that article ID. If you have an article that you know is a topic article and you want to see all of the places that reference it to see if they need to be updated along with the topic article, you can grab this KO topic little merge code. In all of these cases, I'm grabbing the stuff between the brackets and leaving the brackets themselves out. With exact match, it doesn't really matter whether you include them, but this will be enough to like uniquely identify the articles I need. And it's a little bit tidier than having the brackets, but you can technically include them. And in this case, I'll get a fairly similar output. This is a small test knowledge base, so we're not going to get mountains and mountains of stuff in here. Let's see, other things that I've already found this useful for. If you, let's say, use a particular color within your knowledge base, maybe for chunks of text, maybe as a background color for some of your table cells or something like that, and your brand guidelines change and you want to track it down, you can search for that color here, whether it's an RGB code or whether it's a hex code. You can find all the places where it exists as the old color and go update them to the new color. That one's pretty nice. Um, also for cases where you might have content embedded within, let's say an iframe, you can search for iframe source. You can search for iframe source equals and put the full URL if you're looking for a particular reference. Those can be super helpful. Um, Let's see, other things. Where I find the regex patterns useful are for case insensitive text searches. So if you have a word that very often might appear as both the start of a sentence where it's capitalized as well as in the body, that might be a time when doing a text search in regex would be totally appropriate. For example, we recently updated our wording to change from users to authors which involved a whole lot of text updates across our entire knowledge base, I used this feature. I came in and searched for, I think I did user here, ran my search, got everything that had a capital U user, everything with a lowercase user. If you add a wildcard, you can also get everything that's got users plural. So that's a really good use case for it. 
let me think. It's also useful if you're trying to find multiple strings. So maybe I would want to find everything that had the word author or user in it. This requires a little bit of regex knowledge. This example is in the documentation, I promise, because I figured people would have questions on it. So in this case, the vertical pipe serves as an or within regex, and I'm just using the parentheses so it knows where my or starts and stops. This will pull up everything that mentions the word user or the word author, and then I could go through and do my audit. And I've noticed we've gotten a bunch of stuff in chat, so I'm going to pause here and see if I, have I can ask you some questions. questions. Please, Mary Beth, that would save me so, some reading. Yeah, I got you. But I did a good question. Can you restrict your search to a subset of the knowledge base to reduce the amount of processing time? Ooh, not currently, but that is a fantastic feature request. Excellent. And I think the other part of that was like, or doing like an if then, right? Sort mm -hmm. of, and I think that's related. I think that's what Ben meant. Like, if it's in this category, then search for this or something like that. Mm -hmm. But like, some yeah, that would get through with a regex map. Right, like it's, but that's more of content and not really necessary about the higher data article. about the article. Yep, um, yep, yep. At this point, it really, other than pulling into the report what that category is, it's dumb about hierarchy. Yeah. So that kind of complex, only search a subsection of this or search a subsection, yeah. this subsection for X and this subsection for Y, it, it doesn't have that yet. In part because we were curious how people would use it. Yeah. So these kinds of well, requests are how can, we build this stuff out. Yeah, I can say if we did have this magic internal tool that allowed us to run global find and replace for people, and if maybe somebody who's on this call asked us for help with that, it would have been really useful if we had the ability to do it on only certain categories in the knowledge base because that was actually part of the request. And I, we didn't have the ability to just do it for one section and leave out some categories, but I think there's already sort of precedent for that. So I think hearing it from both Ben and somebody else that we've, we've done a, a find and replace for recently, I think that would be useful. Because sometimes you do want to change something, but your knowledge base might be organized in such a way that the, the word you want to look for a change is really only relevant to one section. Yeah. I can say for my example, users uh, as opposed to authors, most of what I cared about on those updates was in a particular category around quote unquote user management, which I was updating to author management. There certainly are references to users in other places in the knowledge base. Some of those were actually to users. Some of them were to end users, which sometimes I replaced with readers. So yeah, I would say even in my example, yeah. it would have been potentially useful to be able to limit it to certain sections. Now, what you could do right now is to run it against the whole knowledge base, get that CSV export, and then within the CSV export, run like a filter against the parent category. Mm -hmm. So you'd be able to go there. The parent category is only going to pull the immediate parent category yeah. though. So it's not going to walk all the way up to the content hierarchy. If you've got stuff three layers deep, it's only going to do the immediate parent category. Yeah. I think the having the top level category would also be really helpful metadata. Like now mm -hmm. you know, discussing metadata, what do we want to see in the advanced search? Like when we have mm -hmm. a UI for it, I think what generally what I care about most is what's at the top. That's and that's me. I don't know if it's everybody, is what's at the top level and not like, the subcategory level. I want to know what section of the knowledge base it's in. Also, Sharon added, it would be great to be able to choose what was in that CSV, like how you can do it from manage, or you can say, this is the information about the article I want. Yep. Yep. Good feature requests. I think a lot of the direction we will see this interface go is very similar to manage. So what I anticipate is that um, once we get to a place where we are displaying the articles returned in the UI, that's probably going to look and feel a bit like manage where we'll have a set number of columns that we're showing there and then the CSV export. And I could see a future where we start adding additional columns and letting you configure what's coming down in that CSV export, just like we do with manage. Right. And as I think got mentioned in chat, but I want to say explicitly for the recording, in case you didn't notice the URL up here is not advanced search, it is find and replace. So our ultimate goal with this feature is that eventually you will be able to run this 
advanced search, and then you will be able to say, I would like to replace all of the instances of this term with this other term. So I want to replace these hex colors, or I want to replace the word user with the word author, or whatever. Um, we're having to build this in sort of baby steps to get to that place, but I know that is a hugely beloved feature request, and I can tell you that is why advanced search exists, so that we can get to the end state of a find and replace that y'all can use yourselves and not have to contact support for.